Hey guys, it's Dina, your mindset evolutionary here at FlyNubianQueen.com, the network for melanated women like you and me. And also welcome to the fellas who are joining us tonight in this talk. Tonight we have a question, is the black woman still a fetish? Um, so um, if you haven't already, please hit the like, the subscribe, and the share button right now, because this is going to be a great talk. We're going to jump right into it. Um, and just, you know, with everything that's been going on with Lizzo, and also we've just had an announcement that we have not two, not three, not even four, but five beauty pageant titles that have gone to black women black women um, from around the world. Three of them obviously are from the US. Um, and then we have one from Africa and one from the Caribbean. And so with all the discussion that has been going on around Lizzo and her hypersexualization and her, as some would call it, um, showing out or as others would call it, acting out, um, I just wanted to discuss this topic because it came to mind for me um, about black women being a fetish um, or black women not wanting to be a fetish or the hypersexualization of black women in the media. Um, there's been a lot of discussion about this. So I wanted to revisit this topic in a, um, I guess, sort of a formal yet informal way, because we're definitely going to bring in some um, some scholars and some, uh, as far as me quoting some scholars, I've put some links in there for you guys to take a look at. So um, why don't you go ahead and uh, put a couple comments in just to let me know you guys are here. I'd love for you to say hello. Or what do you think? Is the black woman still considered to be a fetish in spite of this recent headline here? We have 2019 beauty pageant winners. We have Miss World. We have Miss Universe, Miss USA, Miss Teen USA, and Miss America all beautiful black women, melanated women here. Um, so thinking about this, would we still consider a black woman to be a fetish? Is this a form of fetishizing black women? Let me know what you guys think. I see some comments coming in. Renee Mikaz says, hey. Megan Ivory Colbert says, hello. Let me know what you ladies and gentlemen think. Hello, Tracy Powell. Um, well, okay, so we know that in the news uh, recently we had Lizzo twerking uh, with a thong on and a cutout t-shirt in the back uh, at the time of, I think it was halftime when the cheerleaders were dancing at the Lakers game. Her song came on and she decided that it was time to let that booty pop and bring it out for the whole world. It caused quite a controversy. Everyone's been talking about it. And the topic of conversation has definitely been on the hypersexualization of black women. Is it too much? Stereotypes being reinforced. What about the kids, et cetera, et cetera. So I wanna talk about it from an academic standpoint. So you know me, I like to get into semantics. So first of all, what is a fetish, right? According to Google, a fetish is a form of sexual desire in which gratification is linked to, abnorm to an abnormal degree, to a particular object, item of clothing, part of the body, etc. So let me read that again. A fetish, as defined by Google, is a form of sexual desire in which gratification is linked to an abnormal degree, an abnormal degree, to a particular object, an object, item of clothing, part of the body, etc. Um, so some synonyms for that would be a fixation, an obsession, a compulsion, a mania. Right. Um, the second definition, according to Google, is an inanimate object worshipped for its supposed magical powers or because it is considered to be inhabited by a spirit. Um, some of the synonyms for that definition are juju, charm, talisman, icon and idol. The last two icon and idol. We have that uh, terminology used quite a bit when it comes to our celebrities. They can be fashion icons, they can be a sex icon, they can be a business icon, um, they can be an activist icon, so to speak. So there's a lot of different ways that we can fetishize something, right? 
But a lot of times when we think about black women and we think about our sexuality, a lot of us get very nervous, um, upset, triggered, um, feeling some kind of way when sexuality is projected onto us or even if our sexuality or our beauty is commented on or focused on in some kind of way by someone other than a member of our own race. Does that make sense? I hope it does. I'm trying to articulate this the best way possible. So again, I want to pose the question to you, the audience. Is the black woman still a fetish? Given everything that's going on the same week that Lizzo has, you know, was caught on video, um, Instagram, the TMZ everywhere, all over the media, twerking in a thong at the Lakers game was the same week that we found out all this good news about the beauty pageant winners of the world, Miss World, Miss Universe, Miss USA, Miss Team USA, and Miss America, all crowned in 2019 black women, black women. So um, I do see a comment that just came in from Renee, Renee Mickes, and she says she stated she was inspired by Prince. <laughs> Who is that? Lizzo? Who is she? Are you talking about Lizzo? She was inspired by Prince with the butt out, the, the butt out jeans. <laughs> I think that, okay. All right, Lizzo, you're inspired by uh, Prince. I also saw some headlines where she said she was inspired by Rihanna, who um, wore a see-through top and had her nipples on display at one of the games. I'm not sure which one, but it seems like Miss Lizzo is reaching. <laughs> And trying to find out, oh, who can I connect myself with to, you know, reduce some of this backlash, which I actually don't um, blame her for trying to roll it back a little bit now, because it has kind of cast somewhat of a negative light on her, I think, given the, the location. Okay, because I did some research on this a little bit more, and I found out that I think a week prior to the twerking incident, uh, Miss Lizzo was out at the American Music Awards. And let me just see if I can pull up one of my photos that I printed out. And she had a booty on full dis display on the stage as she danced along with her backup dancers um, singing some of her new songs. So that didn't seem, I mean, a lot of the girls on the stage, I don't know if you guys can see it, but they had the cutout thong type of booty pants um, and some stockings on. Um, it looks like Lizzo has a dress on, so her derriere is covered. However, um, there's obviously a celebration of the booty and it's in a pink thong because she has it sitting on stage um, right behind her as she dances. So we know from history, right, that Sarah Bartman, as I'm sure many of you are familiar with, um, thank you, Renee Mikaz. She says definitely she's talking about Lizzo. Um, we, we have a historical reference point for women, black women in particular, Afri women of African descent um, who have been fetishized and hypersexualized from the European gaze, right? So I want to get a little bit deeper into that. But before we do that, let's talk about the Urban Dictionary definition of uh, fetish, right? The Urban Dictionary, which we all know is, you know, I don't know if it's an authority, but it definitely is. Uh, it comes from the collective of people out here in the streets that go in and add their definitions of what they think according to um, the lingo, the slang of the time, the colloquialisms, um, the popular uses of a word versus the official uses, which I read from Google, which I think come uh, from the Oxford Dictionary. Um, or maybe Merriam-Webster or something like that. Um, but let's look into the Urban Dictionary definition. An object thought to have magical, especially magically sexual powers. That's the first definition. The second one is a sexual fixation or obsession with a usually non-sexual object. Okay, so one of the key words that I keep noticing with the definition of fetish is the word object. Um, in the Google definition, it says 
um, a form of sexual desire in which gratification is linked to an abnormal degree to a particular object. Um, it also says something about an object thought to have magical sexual powers. That's from the Urban Dictionary. So it keeps bringing up the word object, right? So what is an object? Typically an object is something that is not human or animal, but we do know that fetishes can be linked to body parts. It can be linked to races as we're going to get into racial fetishism. So according to Wikipedia, racial fetishism is the fetus fetishization, fetishization of black women expanded during the colonial era. As some white male slave owners raped their black female slaves, they justified their actions by labeling the women as hypersexual property. These labels solidified into what is commonly referred to as the Jezebel stereotype. It must be noted that the opposite of this Jezebel, they have it in quotes, identity or persona is the mammy. They have that in quotes as well. Figure who loses all her sexual agency and autonomy. Now let's look at that dichotomy here because some people have argued online that um, Lizzo is overcompensating for her um, her a projection that could be put onto her as a mammy because she is an overweight black woman. And typically overweight black women were considered to be the mammy. They were considered to be asexual. They were considered to be the, like the mama of the house um, in slavery. And they were the companion, so to speak, the comfort um, in a non-sexual way to the white woman her best companion, and to the white man and his children, his offspring. So she was there to comfort and, and, and be used in the way to make sure that their household was running smoothly. Um, but she was not at all seen to have her own needs, whether it be sexual or just regular human needs. She was at the mercy of the household. And so a lot of times that was um, portrayed in the media, especially if you think about Gone with the Wind, um, all the way up through Aunt Jemima, all the way up through, you know, um, some people consider Oprah to be a mammy stereotype, um, her to embody that because of the connection that she has with the white community. So if you look at Lizzo um, as an as a as a what they call like a BBW, a big beautiful woman, um, and there's all this body positivity going on now for plus size women, um, but for the black woman, there can exist some duality in us, right? From time to time, where we're trying to figure out where the line is. Where's the line between being a stereotype and just being yourself? just owning up to who you are as a, as a human being, as a sexual being, as a feminine being, as a woman that is a plus size, normal size, or below average in terms of being very thin or model thin or whatever you want to call it, right? So let's just say that most of us are kind of walking that line on a daily basis. We're just trying to live. We're just trying to exist, right? But we are sexual beings, right? Um, most of us. I mean, I guess there are some people who are asexual. Um, I don't know anything about that. So I'm just going to speak about it from my own personal perspective. I'm a sec I'm a woman. I'm a sexual being. Um, and, you know, from time to time, you want to express that in different ways. Sometimes you want to be a little bit more out there and, you know, you want to show off your assets. Um, and you want to shake it and pop it and, and just let loose and be you and do you. And then at other times, you might want to be seen um, not as sexual. You may want to put that to the side or uh, have that, keep that a little more close to the vest and have other aspects of who you are as a woman, intelligent. Maybe you are the head of a company. Maybe you are, you know, um, have your own business. Maybe you are... Um, you know, a wife, a mother, um, a community activist, a leader um, in the church, whatever it is, whatever other roles that you play in society, sometimes you want that to come forward. And a lot of times when you are putting that aspect of yourself forward, you don't want to be seen sexually. But what if you're being put into a role where you're not being allowed to be your full self because sexuality is a part of that. And I think that's where it gets very tricky for some of our women 
um, for black women in particular, and probably for a lot of women in general, actually. I don't necessarily think that this is unique to black women, this type of, uh, you know, back and forth that we go through. Um, in terms of like how we want to be seen, how we want to be perceived, um, and, and what we do as individual and as we as a collective of women, um, you know, we talked about thought culture and how that has seemingly become the new uh, stereotype for us. But it's not really new because it's just a different. It's just the Jezebel stereotype by another name, right? So getting back into this, where they say these labels, and this is according to Wikipedia, racial fetishism. So please feel free to look it up. I did put the links in the um, information section to this video. These labels solidified into what is commonly referred to as the Jezebel stereotype. It must be noted that the opposite of this Jezebel identity or persona is the mammy. So if Lizzo could be possibly perceived as a mammy because she's um, a darker skinned or a more melanated woman who is a plus size woman and she's working very hard, some would say, um, to shift away from the mammy figure who loses, according to Wikipedia, who loses all of her sexual agency and autonomy and becomes an asexual figure. Now, L.H. Stallings notes that the creation and identities for the Jezebel or mammy figures are, quote, dependent upon patriarchy and heterosexuality, end quote. An example of racial fetishism within the colonial era is that upon is that of sorry an example of racial fetishism within the colonial era is that of Sarah Bartman Sarah's body was utilized as a means to develop an anatomically accurate representation of a black woman's body juxtaposed to that of a white European woman's body during the age of biological racism. The scientist studying her anatomy went as far as making a mold of Sarah Bartman's genitalia post-mortem because she refused him access to examine her vaginal region while she was still alive. The data collected on Bartman is the original, sorry, is the origin of the black female body stereotype, i.e. large buttocks and labia. Okay, so we're going to take a pause right there. For, the, for your, those of you who don't know who Sarah Bartman is, and I'm sure almost everybody does, but this is a sketch of Miss Sarah Barton. Okay, um, she was from South Africa. And I don't know the tribe that she was from, but some Europeans came upon her. And um, it seems that she had a little bit of, um, I don't want to disrespect her legacy or anything, but a little bit of a, a deformity in the way that her buttocks were shaped. As we know, this is not necessarily uh, normal or typical. We can see that she has very wide hips here. Um, she also has a large breast, as you can see. All right. So she is out in the bush. Um, living her life, being free, doing her as a normal, you know, tribes woman would be during that time. And these guys came upon her and being in the era that they were in where everything was covered all up to the neck and all the way down to the ankles. Um, and, you know, there was, you know, a lot of prudish, prudish ways, puritanical ways, um, you know, a lot of repressed sexuality. And then these guys come upon these people who are living out in the in the sunshine free and not feeling ashamed of their bodies. No one was probably making Sarah feel ashamed about her body. It was unique, but she was doing her. Um, but they came upon it. And of course, they're like men. So they're, you know, they're bug eyed. They're like, oh, we've never seen anything like this before. Somehow, I don't know the, the entire story. They end up with her back, I don't know if they enslaved her um, at that time or coerced her or what happened, but she ended up back in Europe and she became like a spectacle. Um, she became objectified, she became hypersexualized, um, and she, from my understanding of her story, in order to make money, um, over time she became a prostitute and eventually um, contracted an STD and perished. Um, her story is very, very interesting um, to see how 
uh, she was fetishized, how she was objectified, how she was, how their own dark sexuality, because they were living in a very repressed age during the Victoria era, era led them to project their sexuality because they couldn't project it onto their own women because their own women were, you know, covered all the way up and everything down to their, you know, their wrists, down to their ankles, up to their neck. You could, you know, they had clothes on and it was like, sex is bad. Don't have sex. You know, sex is a sin. When in Africa and tribal communities, sex was not focused on in the way that it was in the European culture. So that will give you a little bit of insight into that. Um, if you haven't already, please hit the thumbs up, the like, the subscribe, the share. Thank you for joining me, Dina Jacobs, your mindset evolutionary here at flynubianqueen.com, the network for melanated women. I'm here every Sunday night at 7 p.m. Pacific time and 10 p.m. Eastern time. If you haven't already, please go check out Fly Nubian Money to get your money up and Fly Nubian Business. If you have a business idea we would love to help you with that and please text the word queens to 31996 that's 31996 so you can get um, updates and alerts and also if you haven't please hit the notification bell on YouTube and also on Facebook so that you can get notifications of when we are going live so um, I want to pull up one more image before we jump into some other aspects of fetish fetishizing black women. And again, I'd love to see your comments. I see a few more people have put comments in. What do you think, ladies and gentlemen, is the black woman still be seen, being seen as a fetish, right? So we have this picture here, uh, a sketch of Sarah Bartman, right? And then we have the fashion trend that developed because she was such a hot topic in France among the men that the white women were like, well, wait a minute now, hold on. Next thing you know, boom, they've got bodices on. Now, what does this remind you of? What does this remind you of, ladies and gentlemen? Do you see any modern day uh, manifestations of this type of fixation, obsession, fetish fetishizing um, based on a abnormal or, or an outlier, because I don't want to call somebody abnormal because that can be seen as derogatory, but based on an outlier of a black woman. So let's say, for example, Sarah Bartman, her shape is not usual. It looks like she has um, an outgrowth here, right? Um, that is a little bit unusual. Most of us don't have that much of an outgrowth of a booty. Yes, we do have black women in the community that have extra large natural booties and hips and stuff like that. We know that most of them tend to be thicker plus sized women when they have ridiculous booties that are natural. Every once in a while you run into a black woman who has a naturally slim shape that has an abnormal booty. But again, this is an outlier, right? However, to those sexually repressed men in Europe, that was like, oh my gosh, you know, like they're going crazy because they're not allowed to see any skin where they're from. So they started projecting all of their, you know, sexual energy onto this black woman. And that resulted in the white women being like, yo, um, excuse me, hello, um, let me get a dress. They went to their tailors and said, look, they can't see what's underneath. So can you just make it look like Sarah? Can you just, can you hook it up? Okay. Cause they're just going crazy over Sarah. And the next thing you know, they have bodices. What does that remind you of today? Let me see what the comments have to say. Veronica Banks says, hello, queen. Hello, queen. Veronica Banks says, yes, I know Sarah Bartman. I watched a YouTube video of her story. Beverly Wright, hey, Beverly. Glad to see you here. Ralph Small says, thank you for shedding light on this. I hate how they view black women as nothing but sexual objects. Is that true, Ralph Smalls? You know what I'm saying? I I know that they that some do, but I would even say that some people in our community view us purely as sexual objects as well as some men in their communities view their women as purely sexual objects. So while yes, there is some fetishizing, that is such a tongue twister for me. While there is some fetishization, <laughs> some fetishization of black women from the larger society, I would uh, also say that there is fetishization of women period in some male circles 
it's not just from white men. I think sometimes we can internalize these things as a community and as individuals. And that's kind of where I'm going with this. Are we internalizing these stereotypes and then projecting out negativity onto some of our sisters. And maybe some of them are acting out the internalization because it could be argued that the Jezebel and the Mammy are two spectrums of projected black woman's sexuality, right? So we have the asexual Mammy who has no sexual agency. And then we have the Jezebel who is hypersexual, oversexed, and that's being projected onto her, where it's like she's always got her legs open, she's always in heat, right? So where does the real life, modern day black woman sit between these two stereotypes? Right here, baby, right here. There's an aspect of me that is, I don't know if I wanna say mammy, but you know, that wants to be seen for more than just my beauty, my sexiness, my, you know, my reproductive value. Um, and there's an aspect of me who wants to be acknowledged in those areas as well. So as a human being, there's many sides to us as women. And so what I would say is maybe we could take some of the focus off of projecting onto are women every time they express sexuality. Now, yes, there are some people who take things too far. That's not what I'm talking about tonight. We've had enough people talk about that. I even spoke about that on a video that we did earlier with Fly Nubian Queens. We did a round table earlier this week. You can check on it. It's uh, entitled Lizzo Sit Your Down. <laughs> Should Lizzo Sit Her Down? So you can probably Google that um, or look here on the Facebook page and, and find that video if you want to hear us kind of just talking about it um, in general. But I wanted to get in deeper to how we as a community allow these things to d distract us from some of the things, some of the wins that we are having out here in society. So earlier, about a week and a half ago, Lizzo was out there doing her thing with a big booty. Um, I, I guess this is like a blow up or some kind of display that she had at the American Music Awards. Why all of a sudden this week with her twerking at the Lakers game and having on a thong and a cutout shirt, why did that, did we as a community allow that to distract us from this major win um, in acknowledging our beauty? These women are beautiful. These women are classy. And I wanted to point this out to you. Let's say their names because we everybody knows Lizzo's name, but does everyone know these women's names? This is how we break through the fetish stereotype by holding up our queens that exemplify class and beauty and making that cry that acknowledgement louder than anything that anyone can do that is feeding into stereotypes that you, myself, or the community finds to be demeaning. If we want to like move away from the fetish aspect and the Jezebel aspect or stereotypes, let's create the balance that we're saying we want to see. It is up to us to create that balance. So let's say their names right now. Miss World is Tony Ann Singh. She's Jamaican. And she is going to be a future doctor. We have Zozi Bimi Tunzi, who is South African like Miss Sarah Barton. She's an activist. And she is um, doing work for the uh to stop gender violence okay let's give these women the accolades they deserve we have miss um chelsea christ she is miss usa she's an activist for prisoners and prison reform okay and we have miss kaylee garris um she is miss team usa and she decided that she wanted to wear her hair in a shorter, like mid-length 
natural and break a stereotype there. And so she's considered to be somewhat of an activist when it comes to um, st breaking through uh, stereotypical imagery or uh, what one, what, how would I say that? Because I want to make sure I say that right. Not stereotypical, but just breaking through some of the norms and, and really like I read one of the quotes from her and she said that, and I'm paraphrasing, that she feels really comfortable in her natural curly hair. And so she wanted to represent that way. And look, in her feeling comfortable with who she is, how she was wearing her hair, and everything about her, boom, she won the title. Because that's what it's about, having that inner confidence. And then we have Nia Franklin. She is Miss America, and she is an opera singer. She's an opera singer. So let's look at these women. Let's say their names loud and clear over what is going on with Miss Lizzo, because this is what we say we want to see, and we want to see acknowledged in the media, right? That we want to see acknowledged by our own community. This happened. This has been this has been building up. This didn't didn't just happen in one day. These women were being crowned throughout the year. They've been working to exemplify class, beauty, honor, focus. Um, what else do you want to say? Uh, caring, nurturing of the community. With their, you know, one is going to be a doctor. The others are activists. So they are standing for something right? They're, they're exemplifying confidence. There are all shades of melanated sisters here. Look at this. Is this a fetish? Is this black women being fetishized? Or is this an opportunity for us to shift our focus away from things that we don't appreciate necessarily? I mean, you know, who doesn't like to shake their booty every once in a while? I mean, let's be real, okay? I do. I mean, we all do, I think, from time to time, unless that's just totally not your thing. But okay, and that's fine, right? But if we are saying that we want to break past being a fetish for the larger society, then let's shift our focus to maybe something like these ladies. These ladies have broken through all that ish that I just read to you about racial fetishism and they are role models for us in the community for young women let's hold them high let's say their names let's circulate this information this win for us in our community and not just because it you know these women were selected by supremacist um structures or organizations or whatever you want to call them that are not run or started by us that's not the point the point is is that these are these women for all the various aspects of who they are have been held up as the paragons of beauty and grace not only in the united states but the world and the universe. <laughs> that is us. They're representing for us. Look at them. Graceful, beautiful, amazing. And we're sitting up here focused on a woman who is trying to find her place between a Jezebel and a Mammy stereotype. And that's not saying anything against Lizzo. And this is just my opinion and my perception and analysis of things. Again, I don't know her. I always say those disclaimers. I don't know these women either. But I would say that they have probably dealt with some of the same things, had some of the same conversations with themselves. How much is too much as a black woman? Should I straighten my hair? You know, should I wear this little short dress? with the slit up the side? Is it gonna be cool for me to wear this pants suit or is that gonna be seen as too masculine on a black woman? You know, there's all these little things that go on inside of our heads because of the society that we live in. But these women have figured out how to be confident in themselves, to own who they are. Miss Universe has short hair. 
she has four short, what I would guess would be like a 4C or something like that. A little afro, it's so cute. She twists it a little bit on the top. Super cute. They're representing for us in every area. If I'm not mistaken, these two women right here are of mixed um, race. I'm not sure what their, what their mixtures are, but there's black African somewhere in there. These women um, are not immediately mixed as far as we can tell. Um, so we're sitting up here focused on, dare I say, the wrong person, honestly. Um, we got a celebrity out here. She's very talented. She can play the flute. She can rap. She can dance. She can sing. She can model. She can be sexy. She can do all the things that she wants to do. And that is amazing, Miss Lizzo. Um, but we have these ladies who are doing amazing things too and keeping it super classy as far as we can see here, right? So I'm going to present that question to you again. Is the black woman still a fetish? And I want to hear from you. Let's hear. So Veronica Banks says they promised her money and a better life. I, I'm assuming she's talking about Lizzo. Oliver Tonya says teach. I'm doing what I can just to open up the conversation, but thank you, um, Oliver, for putting that out there veronica bank says kim kardashian okay and this is getting back to this image um where we have them imitating us and also is this a fetish is this a fetish is she fetishizing herself is she doing something very similar to what these europe this european lady down here is doing with the cornrows and everything and then this lady is uh got her bodice on, trying to imitate, trying to appropriate. We need to realize what we have. We are the most brilliantly beautiful, gifted beings on this planet. I think it's time we own it, and we own it with no shame. Yes, we are women. We are sexual. We have beautiful bodies, whether they are slim, whether they are robust, whether they are plus, whether they are average, we should own that and we should allow ourselves to be as we are in all those different ranges and all those different shades and all those different hair types. And if we truly don't appreciate so, uh, someone like Lizzo or whoever twerk in at the Lakers game, then let's turn our attention away from that and let's focus on the win that we have. Let's focus on those who we feel are really giving us something to look up to, who are really bringing about change. These women have worked to bring about a change in the beauty norms. And they're not the first. There are women before them. So let me get into that a little bit, okay? So I'm gonna scroll down to the CNN article where this image came from. Um, and if you scroll down up here in the information, you can see it as well. Again, if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and share. Please share this video because I'm sure there's some people who would really benefit, especially those who are caught up in that Lizzo conversation. Is the black woman still a fetish? Again, I'd love to hear from you. Do you think yes or no? We're gonna see by the end of this video what everybody thinks, okay? So Miss USA, Miss America, Miss Teen USA, Miss Universe, and now Miss World are all black women by Kendall Trammell, CNN, December 14th. Beauty pageants early in their history, some dating back to the 1920s, barred women of color from participating. Even after organizations began changing their rules to accept women of all races, there was still a lingering frustration and opposition to join. Only in the last 50 years have black women become more prevalent in these com com uh, sorry, competitions. Janelle Commissioner was the first black Miss Universe in 1977. Vanessa Williams was the first black Miss America in 1983. And Carol Ann Mary Gist, the first black Miss USA contestant was crowned in 1990. The following year, Janelle Bishop became the first black Miss Teen USA. And so there were women pushing forward to be seen as classy and beautiful and full of life and on purpose, right? They're on purpose, right? 
and gifted, right? Way before 2019, but what's unique and beautiful about this is that this is a signifier, guys. This is a, I feel like this is a sign of where we are right now in our movement towards achieving what we are owed and due at this particular time in this world. This is a move. This is like a move on the chessboard. All the queens are in place. Do you see that? Each and every one of them has a crown. The natural hair girls don't have the crown on. What does that mean? <laughs> I think it's just the they hadn't put the crown on them yet at this point. But you see her with her crown. You see her with her crown. You see her with her crown. These two, you don't see the picture with the crown, but they won. These are queens on the chessboard, honey. These are queens. They're in place. The move, they have moved into their place. We are the most brilliantly beautiful gifted beings and it is time that we own it and turn our focus away from the Mammy Jezebel conflict. I think one of the reasons why a lot of us were triggered by that is because we still harbor that conflict inside of us. Not knowing who we are or how we wanna be. If we need some examples and that's what everybody's saying, like what about the kids? You know, what about the families? What about society and how they view us? Here's the answer. Here's the answer. Read up and follow on these women. Celebrate these women. Post stories about these women, about this triumph. And it's not just about proving something to the larger society. This is about us acknowledging us. Do you hear what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen? This is about me acknowledging me. This helps me to acknowledge the fullness and wholeness of me as a black woman and break through the black inferiority complex. Shift your mindsets with me. I'm guiding you to freedom from negative conditioning, if you will allow. I love you guys so much. And I've really thought about this. You know, who are we? I'm going to post these ladies up on my mirror to remind me of the fullness of my beauty. It's not just about the skin deep or what shade, all the colorism, all that foolishness. We're always online about colorism and dark skin and light skin and mixed and biracial. and This is us, the fullness of who we are. And we are beautiful. We are queens. And we are well-rounded, we are singers, we are activists, we are doctors, we are beautiful, melanated queens. Do you see that? I know you do, I know you do, I know you feeling me. And I just wanted to point out a couple of other black women who are breaking through stereotypes. We have a Muslim sister who is a top model right now, fully clothed, beautiful, melanated, classy. I want you to check her out. Her name is Halima Aiden. She is what I consider to be a mindset evolutionary. Hashtag that, okay? Also, look at her on the runway. Gorgeous, fully clothed, okay? We have Miss Winnie Harlow. Right, let's celebrate these queens. Now, I put this picture of Winnie because I wanted you to show to you to see Winnie also showing off her figure and her booty, but also showing off her um, skin disorder that has helped her to gain a certain amount of confidence to push herself forward. You see that? To where she is modeling. She is a top model, Winnie Harlow. But she's also very proud of her body. You know that she's showing off her booty right here too. Now, is that a bit much for me? You know, I don't, you know, she's in a bathing suit. Okay, we've all been in a bathing suit. You know what I'm saying? She's a model, that's part of her job. But look at her and look at Halima. Look at Winnie and look at Halima. This is the fullness of who we are right now. We are brilliantly beautiful, gifted beings. We have smashed the fetish. We have smashed and broken through the stereotypes. Do you see that? Do you see the diversity? 
all types of black women, even those with skin disorders are being held up as paragons, as idols, as icons of beauty. We don't have to twerk if we don't want to. But for those of you who want to still do that, that is up to you. But know that there is no pressure anymore because we are moving ourselves forward because we have the confidence. And if you go to my Facebook page, Dina Jacobs Rants on Facebook, you will see a link. If you scroll down where Winnie and Halima they are talking to Forbes and they're talking about how they push through to become the icons that they are today. How they pushed past the stereotypes. How they deal with being role models. The pressure that they feel. In particular, Winnie talks about sometimes she just want to go outside in a bonnet and, and go down to the place and get some chicken and just be normal sometimes. But she understands that she has responsibility and that it can be a bit much at times, but that she hopes that people will understand that she is still human. And that's what I see here, is a girl who's still human. She's making a silly face. She's got a little headband on and, the, you know, her little hair is not doing, uh, it's, it's a little messy bun type of thing almost. And she's got her bikini on and she's like, look at me with all my spots. I'm being goofy, right? This is what we have to understand, that we are multidimensional beings and we're beautiful inside and out regardless. So let's move on to a couple of other things that I wanted to point out. The cultural appropriation, right? Okay, and then let's not forget that black women aren't the only ones out here fetishizing and playing into sexual stereotypes for money, okay? We have the queen of it right here, the queen, Miss Madonna. And then we have little Miley Cyrus. We know she's gotten even, you know, more out of pocket than that. But I just wanted to show you that they're doing their, she's doing her booty shot. Okay. <laughs> Madonna being a mess. She's in it for shock value. And I think also um, Lizzo might be in it for shock value too. So is Kim Kardashian. But let's not say that we don't have any icons to look up to. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to choose our focus. Is the black woman still a fetish? My answer to that is it depends on how you focus. It depends on where you put your focus. Choose wisely what you give your attention to. Your attention is connected to your time and they are a resource that is not you cannot regain that resource once you spend your time and once you give your attention to something pay attention spend time you can never get that back so choose wisely because what you're spending your time on what you're giving your time and attention to comes back to you in your subconscious mind and, ma and manifests in other ways in your life. So invest your time and your attention wisely, my kings and queens. Now let me just uh, start to wrap this up. I wanna get into some of your comments some more too, so let me do that real quick. And again, thank you so much for joining me, Dina Jacobs, live every Sunday night at 7 p.m. Pacific time and 10 p.m. Eastern on FlyNubianQueen.com on Facebook and the replay on YouTube, Fly Nubian Queen, as well as on Dina Jacobs Rants. I try to re-upload those there. Please follow me in those places um, and give us a like, a subscribe, a share. Make sure you hit the notification bell so when we go live and we post new videos, you can jump right in and give us your opinions and join the conversation on the hottest topics out there. And again, I am Dina Jacobs, your mindset evolutionary, guiding black women to freedom from negative conditioning. Um, so let's see what you guys have to say. We have Sendile de Lamini. I'm from South Africa, and each time I hear about Sarah, I get sad. Men like to look and say rude comments about women sometimes. You know what? Men are going to be men, right? But it's about how you carry yourself. You can choose whether or not to internalize the things that they say, Sendile. If you're getting sad, 
and you're feeling like your worth is low, I would definitely say be inspired by your sisters to understand that you don't think these women had to go through some of those things too. They're in the beauty pageant industry. Do you know all the sexual harassment and stuff that goes on in those type of places? They're being objectified by their very profession, by their entry into that place. So they're walking on a tightrope between displaying their beauty and their sexuality and their reproductive qualities and demonstrating their talents, their smarts, their ingenuity, their drive and determination, their focus. So you're not alone in the things that you go through. And let's just understand that, yes, Sarah, Sarah Bartman's life was very tragic. However, it was not in vain. It was there to teach us something about self-worth and self-value and not allowing the outside society to project its sicknesses and its, its dualities onto you. Guard yourself. I have another video where I talk about are black women lacking healthy boundaries? If you get a chance, go back and watch that. Watch that. I created a video a playlist on flynubianqueen.com Facebook page where you can go skim through my videos and you can watch the one on setting healthy boundaries for yourself so that no matter what anyone says, you can stand, stand on a confidence foundation of who you are and you don't have to receive any of that negative energy and you can choose to remove yourself from situations that make you feel vulnerable. It's all about self-love. We as black women have to love ourselves enough to turn away from those things that are triggering us. Those things that are trying to make us feel like less than. There might be a conspiracy that is true about them promoting Lizzo twerking at the Lakers game so that we could miss out on this chess move, this blessing, this win of all the queens stepping into place. Boom, 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 boom. Black women are the most beautiful women in the world. Look at that. Maybe there is some truth to the conspiracy theories about that. And that's why I'm saying it's up to us to choose where we put our focus. I hope that sinks in. I hope that helps. Let me know. <laughs> Ellis Lamont, hello, beautiful queen. Hello, King. Oliver, Tonya, she's clapping for me. Thank you, baby. Veronica Banks put up four purple hearts. Well, thank you. Love back to you. Veronica, Tracy Powell, beautiful. Tracy Powell, on purpose, distraction. Like I said, you choose. Now, even if something catches your attention, because boom, it's a loud bang, boom. See it for a minute, you look at it, and you realize you're safe and you're good, boom, turn away. You choose where to pay your attention, black people. You choose where to be triggered or not. And if something is triggering you that much, Figure out why and deal with it. Make peace with it. That is up to you. Again, it's about self-care. Self and I've done some videos about self-care as an act of political warfare. Choosing where you put your focus and attention, that is also an act of political warfare. We can tune things out that don't affirm the greatness of who we are as individuals and as a collective community. That's a choice that we can make. And it's easy to do. And it doesn't cost you anything. And it doesn't, um, it doesn't hurt anybody. It actually is good for you to be more discerning, the gift of discernment. Pray and meditate on the gift of discernment and you will be granted God, the universe, the higher being, the inner self, however you want to name him or her or it will bless you with that if you meditate and focus on having discernment on where you pay your time and attention to. Let's keep going. <laughs> uh, Elarwi LG says the light ones are still fetishized. Um, okay, I, 
you know, if that's how you feel about it, I can understand that. I mean, actually, let's touch on that a little bit. Um, thank you for bringing that up, um, Elarwi Elegy, because there is something in here with the racial fetishism on Wikipedia where, um, oh, you know what, I almost forgot to talk about this one. The Jezebel Stereotype Ferris State University Museum of Racist Memorabilia. Now, again, I put the link up there. Um, the Jezebel Stereotype from Ferris State University Museum of Racist Memorabilia. I think you guys should go to that link because there is a lot of interesting information you can find out where some of these stereotypes have originated from. And it gives you clarity. And then I think with the, cl the clarity that it gives you helps to release some of that um, uh, internalization so that you can see it and then it's easier for you to discern and turn your attention away from it when you see it you know what I'm saying because there's certain things I just don't re I just don't watch I just don't interact with um, on the day-to-day -day. I try to stay focused on my own evolution my own elevation and I try to focus on things that feed that such as a a that feeds me. That lets me know that I am one of the most brilliantly beautiful, gifted beings to ever grace this earth. And I, and I am free to own that. And hopefully you feel that way too. That's why I'm sharing this with you because I want all of you to feel that way too. I don't care if you're light, dark, biracial, black as night, light as the sun. I don't care. Love yourself. 100% completely. And don't let anybody else tell you anything about the greatness of who you are. You are a black woman. That is a gift. And that comes with so much grace and beauty. So much amazing energy, that creative energy that we can put into anything that we want. Look at everything we have created. We created America, the greatest country on earth, debatably, right? <laughs> anyway, I digress. So um, again, the portrayal of black women, this is according to the Ferris State University Museum of Racist Memorabilia on the Jezebel stereotype. The portrayal of black women as lascivious, and that means like um, sexually promiscuous, by nature is an enduring stereotype. The descriptive words associated with this stereotype are singular in their focus, seductive, alluring, worldly, beguiling, tempting and lewd. Historically, white women as a category were portrayed as models of self-respect, self-control, and modesty, even sexual purity. But black women were often portrayed as innately promiscuous, even predatory. This depiction of black women is signified by the name Jezebel. Now, um, white women, let's see, what did I say? White women were portrayed as models of self-respect, self-control, and modesty, even purity. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Does that look modest or pure to you? Does this look modest or pure to you? Okay, so we know that that's BS. Just like they got all kinds of women over there doing their thing, right? Uh, the first lady, you can find naked pictures of her online, I'm told. Melania Trump. Now she's covered up and looking real ladylike. Everybody has a past, you know what I'm saying? Women are multifaceted beings. So no one's perfect. Don't expect black women to be perfect either. Choose your focus, choose where your attention goes. Where your attention goes, energy flows. Remember that from the uh, secret? So if you put energy into Lizzo, then that's what you're gonna get back projected onto you. If you put energy into the beautiful, classy, well-rounded, and amazing queens who have just boom, 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 snapped into place to show the world just how amazing we are, how brilliant and beautiful and gifted we are, this is us. All we have to do is own it. So um, let's see. What else do I want to leave you guys with? 
Um, I think, you know what, I think we, we hit a lot, actually. Let me just finish reading through your comments. Let me know what you think of this talk. And again, we're at the end of all the information that I wanted to share with you. Is the black woman still a fetish? After everything I've discussed with you, do you feel that the black woman is still a fetish? I'd love to see what you have to say about this. Um, let's see, Kendra Jackson says, Yes, queens. <laughs> I think she's talking about the picture I put up several times. I'm like beating you guys over the head with it. Look, 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 look. Um, Campbell Altovis says skin. Uh, skin, okay. John Hill Jr., greetings. I think she's talking about all the different shades of skin, which is amazing. Um, he is promoting. Um, are you inviting me to come on and talk? Because if you are, then you need to message me. You can hit me up on um, Instagram, DM me at Dina, D-E-E-N-A. J-A-C-O-B-S, Flaunts, that's Dina Jacobs on Instagram. Hit me up if you, um, if you, I think maybe you're trying to invite me to talk on your radio show. Yeah, I'm sure we can arrange something. Um, Veronica Banks, Gifted Beans, amen. You know it, honey, you better own it. Kendra Jackson says, where there's positives, there will be negatives as well. But we can choose our focus, Kendra. You can always choose your focus. You're right, dark and light exist always in this plane. That is part of it, right? But we have choice, free will. We were given free will, and that's the beauty of it because we can choose to focus on the dark or the light. Choose your focus and choose well. Um, Kendra Jackson says, thank you. Thank you, Queen. Thank you for being here. Sandili Delamini says, thank you, Dina. It helped a lot. Oh, yes. That's what I hope. I want. You know, this helps me too. Because when I research these topics, it lifts me up. It, it, it helps me grow. And definitely interacting with you and being here with you as a community of women and the men who join us, it really fulfills me, and I hope that it fulfills you too. That's what this is about. This is about us coming together as a community and breaking free of the lie of black inferiority. Breaking through the myth of the double negative of being black and a woman. Ah, that is not us. That is not me. That is not you, unless you choose to be. Um, Campbell Alto says they lose their virginity before black girls with father in the house, but definitely put on birth control. Black girls develop faster due to not having man in the house. Interesting, Campbell. Um, that's very interesting. I, I'm not sure I know enough to even speak on that, but thank you for sharing um, your opinions. Veronica Bice says, I'm loving this. Well, I'm so glad, Queen. Um, I'm really glad that you all joined me here. I'm going to wrap this up right now. We're just at an hour. Um, if you have any uh, topic ideas or anything, and make sure you like this talk, share this, especially with the younger women. I really want to get them involved. We owe it to them as a community of women to give them things that uplift their spirit. If you're saying that these images that they're seeing are bad for the young girls coming up and it's a bad example, then let's give them something different and let's give them a little something with some background, you know, so they can understand why paying attention to certain things is can potentially work against them. But don't just tell them, don't look over there, don't look over there. You got to give them something else to, to put their focus on. You got to help them shift their focus. We have to guide them to choose wisely and make better decisions. So share this video. Um, subscribe to our channel here at flyknoobianqueen.com. And if you haven't already, please give us the thumbs up, the hearts, the subscribes, the shares. I thank you so much. My name is Dina Jacobs. I'm your mindset evolutionary, guiding black women to freedom from negative conditioning here every Sunday night on flymovingqueen.com, the network for melanated women, 7 p.m. Sunday nights, Pacific time, and 10 p.m. Eastern time um, every Sunday night. Thanks again. I'm so glad you had joined me, and I hope you got something out of this. I love you so much. See you next week. Bye.